Hello everybody, welcome back to another brand new episode of Decoding the Unknown. As always, I am your decoder, Simon Wammers here. One of my writers, in this case, Katie, is reading the script, The Phoenix Lights, unraveling the greatest UFO mystery. What? The greatest mystery? It's, it's Ros... Well, Roswell's not really a mystery, is it? Because then, weren't the CIA like, yeah, it's a weather balloon. And then they were like, all right, all right, it's planes. It's secret spy planes, okay. You know what? It's not aliens. It's never aliens. Um, okay, well, maybe this is the greatest, like, mystery, because the mystery is I've never heard of it. Hilarious. Let's just jump in. Oh my god, Simon. We may have hit the mother load with this one, though, we haven't, Katie. <laughs> Odds of me being convinced about UFOs by the end of this video, about 0.4%, I'd say. But, as always, like Fox Mulder, I want to believe. I do want to believe. I I do absolutely believe in aliens. I think there are aliens out there. Probably a lot of them. Do I believe that they have come to Earth and intervene, interfered in like our affairs or have any interest in us whatsoever? No. No, we're like ants to the- We're like an amoeba. Like, they have no interest in us. I think you and I are on the same page. We accept that there must be other forms of intelligent life out there in the vast expanse of, sp expanse of space somewhere. Yes, but these other forms of life do not regularly pop down to a jolly old Earth to, for example, A, build the pyramids, B, kidnap some yokels for no apparent reason other than anal probing, C, anally probe some crab cows, D, scoop up boats and blades in the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah, it's like, all right, so the aliens, yeah, they're super intelligent aliens that have built some some sort of magical faster than light ship right and they come to earth and all they want to do is look at our bottoms they're like i wonder what's in that hole <laughs> i said what what in the butt 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 and then they go inside and they're like oh dude no <laughs> like why would they do this i think it's just people who like having their butts touched or something and being like whoa well, uh, <laughs> You know, people who go to the hospital like, well, how did that bottle get up there, sir? I'd sound it. <laughs> They're like, did someone eat? It was aliens. <laughs> I think we can also agree that some other forms of life may be many times more advanced than us humans, either due to the fact that their civilizations have millions of years jump on us, or that we're actually just a bit crap in comparison. Taking this as a possibility, it's also therefore possible that other life forms or aliens have actually taken time out of their busy schedules to cruise by the little blue planet to see what's going on. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's happened. Maybe they've cruised by in their ships and been like, <laughs> boring. Let's not look inside their bottoms. People have been spotting UFOs for time and memorial mainly because UFO does not mean alien fly not flying saucer. It simply means unidentified flying object, which could mean anything that the viewer doesn't recognize in that moment. It could be a plane, a balloon, a weird cloud formation, the planet Venus, or even just optical illusions due to light reflecting off of something. It could be even, you know, you get those sometimes when you like screw your eyes up really hard and you see some crazy stuff, or you get those things that float by in front of your eyes, like the little eye floaters. That's more likely to be a UFO, isn't it? The massive majority of UFO sightings can be explained and proven to be very much of this world, and even if they can't, there's generally not any photographic or video evidence to back up a witness's claim, so we really only have their word for it. So let's now jump into the events commonly referred to as the Phoenix Lights, where not only is there photographic and video evidence, the event was also witnessed by hundreds, if not thousands, of people. Oh, I have heard of this! And it is quite good. It really is quite good, but I remember not being convinced by the end of it. Is there an on-planet explanation for what all these people saw? Well, let's find out. The Phoenix Lights. Cast your minds back to March 1997. Do you remember what you were up to? No, I was like 10. <laughs> March 1997. I was in year five of primary school. I don't even remember the name of my teacher. So, no, I don't remember what was happening on March the 16th. I was probably in school. Sorry, just March. I don't know where I got the 16th from. Um, I was probably in school. Probably a bit bored. I'm doing maths or something. Ugh. Ugh. I was 16 and freshly released from dental and optical social hell. What was that? Ah, oh, I see. My braces had come off and I had swapped dorky NHS glasses for contact lenses, so I was entering my heartbreaker phase. If I had bothered to spend much time looking up into the night sky, would, have, would I have noticed anything strange? Probably not. Even now, the only constellation I know is Orion's Belt. Yeah, Orion's Belt's easy. And what's the other? Is it the Big Dipper? I know it's got a more like official name, but the one that kind of looks like a big 
Duke's saucepan? That's the one I know. And there's also one that looks like a W. And I'm always like, ah, the constellation of Whistler. <laughs> and anyway, I lived in Burbsville, Surrey. Never heard of burbs. Oh, like suburbs, suburbsville. Oh, ha ha. So light pollution and a general lack of anything interesting ever happened, but paid to any extraterrestrial encounters. Uh, we lived less than half an hour from Heathrow Airport, so a Concorde going over was about the only thing of note in those days. Things were different across the pond in Arizona, however. Yeah, can you guys hear that? Can you guys hear that drilling in the background? It's driving me absolutely potty. It's not showing up on my audio meter at all, so I guess not, but it is loud and it is the third time in two years that my neighbors are having some sort of construction and it drives me absolutely batty like fully batty all day just these drilling sounds through the walls and i'm trying to make videos and i'm trying to concentrate on stuff and it's like I i'm quite busy and it's just really annoying <laughs> oh why get like i can't i'm so done just to note that while sightings of strange lights started in Nevada and were even later seen in Mexico, we'll refer to the events on March the 13th, 1997 as the Phoenix Lights, as that's what it's already commonly known as. So why make things hard for ourselves? To be honest, no one is completely sure whether this was one event or several different ones, so the umbrella term of Phoenix Lights seems to cover everything. On March the 13th, 1997, a mass sighting of a UFO event occurred. To quote Dr. Lynn Katai, Oh, thank you. Sorry, key tie. <laughs> Katie's included a pronunciation guide for me. Thank you. Who <laughs> will pop up more later? It was, quote, and in all caps, the most witness, most documented, most credible, and most important mass UFO, UAP sighting in modern history. What is UAP? Oh, it stands for Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, by the way. Just using that, all caps. What was your name? You're a doctor, though. I don't know what a do you're a doctor of. When I was at school, we had all these prospectuses, which are these things you get, you know, when you go into university. And this was in the past. Like, this was probably around 2005, I think, when I was leaving school. And they had, like, um, all of these different, you know, what you can study at different universities. And we found that you can study to be doctor of guitar. And so for the longest time, it was just like, what you're a doctor of, doctor of guitar. It was like this joke at school. And in retrospect, it sounds super lame. <laughs> but we thought it was very funny at the time that people could be doctors of guitar. So uh, that's a little big setup for the joke. Uh, Lynn, what are you, a doctor of guitar? Uh <laughs> God, it's not funny at all, it's just cringe. Starting at around 7.30 p.m., people started seeing strange amber lights in the sky. These lights were large, round, and were witnessed traveling southeast from Henderson, Nevada, over rocky and mountainous terrain towards Phoenix, Arizona. The number of lights seen varied, but there were at least five, with one leading and two on each side, forming a V, wedge, boomerang, or triangle shape. Some witnesses also saw two smaller lights trailing at the rear of the V, docking and undocking from the main formation lights held position relative to each other, giving the impression that they were all part of one enormous flying object, potentially up to a mile wide. Oh my lord. But this is happening at night, and immediately I'm like, well, it's just a bunch of airplanes, isn't it, all flying in? I don't know. Can they fly in formation? Yeah, of course they can. We've all seen it many times, and they also have lights on them. Some witnesses confirmed that stars couldn't be seen between the lights, meaning that they were joined together by some kind of structure. No, it doesn't mean that. If there's a bright light, like, I'm looking into this very bright light that lights up my studio right now. Everything around me is dark, except for the TV up there. Um, because I'm looking at a very bright light. But when I look away, I can see, like, oh no, my office is illuminated. Because that's how optics work. Smart. Other people confirmed that they actually saw a boomerang or V-shaped craft. The lights moved silently and extremely slowly, sometimes flying no more than 100 feet or so above people who happened to be outside. Whoa, okay. Witnesses agree that the lights were self-contained and not shining down like spotlights. People then reported the craft or lights zooming off at top speed. As the lights continued towards the more populated areas of Arizona, more and more calls started coming in to 911 operators. Later in the evening, going on for 10 p.m., hundreds of people saw several orbs in the sky, now generally described as bright or brilliant lights in a row. They were higher up than they had been reported over Nevada and northern Arizona earlier in the evening. These lights appeared one by one and were visible for over 20 minutes, holding position and altitude before eventually disappearing 
in a different order. At first, while there was little local press about it, not much airtime was given to the phenomenon, but with so many people unsure about what they had seen, Phoenix Councilwoman Frances Barr would eventually start bringing it up in city council meetings, ostensibly as a public safety issue. To her surprise, nobody seemed remotely interested in talking about the strange lights in the meeting, and according to Barwood in the 2005 documentary The Phoenix Lights, she was approached by a city manager after the meeting who said, You shouldn't have asked that question. Oh my! Yeah, but is there any record of that, or is this just one woman's story? And what, does this city manager work for the CIA or something? He's a city manager. Is that important? It's not like a mayor or something, is it? A mayor's important. Do mayors do anything? Or do they just show up to like a groundhog out of a hole and tell people where the winter's coming? What does a mayor do? I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Barwood was determined to get to the bottom of the mystery now, especially as she had the backing of hundreds of Phoenix residents who were still calling, confirming what they had seen and asking questions. As might be expected, however, Barwood was quickly made a laughing stock both in the council offices and in the press. A cartoon was printed uh, with a light switch on her forehead with the caption, Those mysterious lights over Phoenix, they're on, but nobody's home. Barwood is also shown wearing an I Heart UFOs badge and, say, and a sign saying, Francis Emma stopped the cover up Barwood. She was also subjected to workplace bullying, with colleagues already giving out business cards with her name on it and speak to the tin foil, I will hear you printed on them. <laughs> These people are a bit harsh though, aren't they? Although if you're like, everyone's, so many people saw this right. If there was such a like 100% belief in these lights rather than people just thinking it's silly, they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be making fun of her. Would they? They'd be like, oh no, she's just like really into getting to the truth and all of the rest of us are just like, can we just get on with our jobs, please? The aliens, if they came, they have gone. I mean, come on, haven't these people got anything better to do? Yeah, it does seem a bit harsh from her colleagues. Like, chill out, guys, it's okay. Wait, wait, wait. All of you! Daddy, chill. All she's doing is looking out for the public's interest. She even wrote a letter to then-Senator John McCain asking for an investigation to be carried out. He passed her request on to the National Archives, but didn't state that it was a councilwoman who was asking, only passed it on as a concern coming from a constituent. Also, anything sent to the National Archives is just filed away, not investigated, so nothing happens. Sounds like John McCain did exactly the thing that he, this dude, it's like, okay, okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to, uh, set, I'm sending that to the National Archives. They're going to look right into that. They're definitely not going to archive it away in a hole and never look at it again. <laughs> The Air Force had no interest in launching an investigation, and eventually in June, the governor of Arizona, Fife Symington, held a press conference saying that they get to the bottom of the mysterious lights. Later on the same day, he called another press conference to close down the story. Oh, that is suspicious though, isn't it? Old Symington the Eli, we're definitely going to look into this. Bring, bring. Hello, Fife, it's the CIA here. <laughs> it does feel like he got shut down by the government, right? Because if this was aliens, the government's not shutting him down. They're like... Okay, we'll look into the alien thing, okay, Five? Have a great day. But if it's something the CIA was up to, or the Air Force, or, you know, like some secret government shit, then they're very likely to give the governor a call and be like, Listen, Fife, um, we're not going to threaten you. It's just like you need to do us a favor because we're the CIA and we'll destroy your family. <laughs> Don't make me destroy you. Saying that they found the culprit, he brought out someone dressed in a space alien suit. Was that the CIA's idea? Just to confirm this was a joke and not a real alien, they took the costume's head off, revealing a slightly disheveled and probably quite sweaty human inside. You're the governor of a state! What are you doing? Spending- You're not a mayor! I know what- I say I know what governors do, I really don't know what governors do. <laughs> but look, I know governor's important, because it's like, you're like the president of a state, right? And states, like, isn't California like the sixth largest economy in the world or something? I don't know about Arizona. As far as I know, they make iced tea. So they're probably not like that. But still, I know it's important. I know you're like the chief. You're the big wig. Wait, is the senator the big wig? Oh, I don't know, Americans. Your system's very complicated. But look, I'm sure, unlike the mayor of a town, you have something better to do, Fife. Symington said, This just goes to show that you guys are entirely too serious. The audience laughs. And that's basically the end of it. This made Barwood pretty pissed off, it, as it seemed like it was not only making fun of her personally, but also of what she estimates to be around 10,000 people who saw the strange lights and had been contacting her ever since she started asking questions. While the story was now global news, it always just ended with a bit of a shrug. 
On anniversaries of the event, the same old witnesses regularly pop up again, but even though this is the longest lasting UFO ever event on record, also seen by the most amount of people, it's just sort of been put quietly to the side. So, are all these people kooks? Did they see something explainable but top secret? Oh, I wasn't anyone in the media investigating. And the answer is the answer actually quite disappointing. <laughs> Lower foreshadowing there, Casey, is it? Is it going to be disappointing? Is an, is an episode of Decoding the Unknown going to have a disappointing end? My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. Where it turns out that it's not you know, a monster or... It's like Scooby-Doo. It's always a man in a mask. It's decoding the unknown. It's always not f***ing aliens. Explanations. All right, let's look at this sensibly. It's probably the military doing some military stuff. Arizona is a well-known hotbed of extraterrestrial activity. Just look at Travis Walton abduction story, although the state is only about number seven in the list of U.S. states for UFO sightings. Oh, there you go. California is first by a mile, followed perhaps unsurprisingly by Florida. And is this per capita? Because I imagine about four people live in Arizona. I just, like, if you showed me a map of America, I'd be like, I don't know where Arizona is. It could be next to Florida. It could be next to, um... Oh, what's that state in the top left? Washington State. It could be, like, up there. It could be bottom left, California. It could be there. It could be close to, like, Vegas. Or it could be in the top right. And I have no idea what that top right country state is. Because when you look at a map of America and the states, they all get really big out west. And you've got that, like, northeast corner, which looks like, I don't know, they, they took one Texas and divided it up into, like, 50 different, not 50, but, like, 20 different states. Maybe Vermont? Just taking a, gre take, taking a guess? You know, there's people out there who play that GeoGuessr game. And they could be like, I don't even know where Arizona is. And then... <laughs> And then someone would be like doing the GeoGuessr, uh, which is a game where it drops you into Google Street View somewhere in the world and you have to guess where you are and people do it and they get it within miles, like super close and within seconds. And they're like, uh, yeah, I'm in Argentina. I'm near this town because I know the name of that town or like the street paintings you know the, the the lines on the street or like this in argentina or that's an argentinian post box like that these people are wild it's so impressive sorry that was a bit of a tangent next as well as being large population centers meaning that there's more people to log reports bingo both also have space force bases that's a relatively new thing isn't it meaning that while a lot of things in the sky might be unidentifiable to the general public they're probably just rockets satellites space debris or other stuff connected to launching things into the air there isn't a space force base in arizona or nevada though so we might be able to rule that out also if the lights were a string of satellites or something like that it would also have been easy to check and confirm but this was never given as a serious explanation well they were really close to the ground weren't they didn't they say there was like 100 feet and i know judging distance can be incredibly challenging um but it's definitely not satellites because they're really far away what arizona does have however in close proximity to where the lights were seen is an airport the phoenix sky harbor international airport no less and the luke air force base which has been used as a pilot training base for many years and which comes complete with various large training ranges so let's start here in search for answers about the Phoenix Lights. The March 1997 sightings weren't even the first time lights like this had been seen in the area. Two years prior, in 1995, Dr. Lin Kitai took photos of glowing amber lights in front of South Mountain in Arizona, and just two months before the main event, she saw a line of three lights and a line of six more above them. While your basic point-and-click cameras weren't up to much in the mid-90s, the photo she caught bore a resemblance, if a slightly fuzzy one, to the lights that later appeared in March. Intrigued, she placed a call to the local paper to see if they were interested in the story or if they knew of anything happening that could explain the lights she'd seen. They're probably a bloody Dr. Kitai again, writing me. It's like people who email me and they'll write me over and over again asking me to cover like, oh my God, can you cover this? It's amazing. And I'll click on some link, you know, we like some conspiracy website or something. But people will just like, they'll be like, hello, Simon, have you, have you got my emails? Have you thought about covering this? Because I keep emailing and you don't get back to me and I never see this appear on any of your channels and it's like what the f do you think i am why you think you have to what you why do you have some expectation that i'm gonna cover your crazy story leave me the f 
Mike alone. How'd you get my email? They said no one had called about anything like that, even though she had the previous night. Well, they're probably like, yeah, we're ignoring the call that you made because we're talking to you. You know you made that call. It's not like some suspicious cover-up. They suggested calling Luke Air Force Base, a sensible idea. Kitai says that the base denied doing anything the night before, practically before she'd even finished asking. Yeah, because they're the military. They're like, where you, where, you'd be like, hello, ring, ring, is that the military? Were you up to anything last night? And they're like, no, thank you. Like, why would they say yes? And even if they say yes, they're not going to give you any information. Why would they? Instead, they pointed her to Sky Harbor Airport, another imminently sensible suggestion she called there, and eventually got through to someone in air traffic control who confirmed that people were working there the previous night, and they had seen, seen some strange lights in the sky, but these lights had not appeared on their radars. When Kitai excitedly asked what the lights had been, the man just said, beats me, and that was the end of it. Yeah, because I'm sure they see weird stuff all the time, and they're like, ah, oh, it's just probably, like, maybe it was one of those glowing bug bugs that was really close to the tower or something, you know, blah 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 there's always some that for people who see these all the time and like the pilots who are up there and they see those streaks of light or whatever they're always like yeah it's just some normal shit it happens it happens so were the lights really like everyone says they were well, also we're talking about two different things here the v-shaped craft with lights that flew over witnesses and the line of orb lights over phoenix unfortunately or maybe rather conveniently no photos or video were taken of the boomerang or v-shaped craft although all witnesses described it in almost exactly the same way when kitai took her first video of a line of lights in front of the mountain she talked about them being large but you don't really get a sense of that in the footage she explained this by saying Quote, the video doesn't do it justice. In real life, they're huge. They're amber. There's no flaring. They're like a ball. On the video, they flicker. They're white. They're much smaller. But nonetheless, the formations themselves are compelling. So, uh, hmm. Okay, Lynn. Yeah, this is one of those things. It's like, yeah, when you film stuff, it's like it doesn't always look like it does in real life. And I don't know. Sometimes it's like it does appear a bit more rubbish, doesn't it, than it actually is. But then, like, for example, the moon always looks massive but then you took a photo take a photo of it, it looks small because it's just an optical illusion it looking massive because you're comparing it to the horizon line and when it's in a photo it's uh it, it's small because it's like I, I don't know the reason but you all know the optical illusion right so going back to the slow flying craft some witnesses reported seeing the underside of it as it went over them and that it had an iridescent undulating look surely something that size and shape with no visible means of propulsion must be from another world right well let's take a quick reality check secret military tech ah uh, you can never really truly rule out top secret operations uh, of course there's of course there's no way to prove this but you can bet your backside that the u.s military is testing out all kinds of tech at any given time without letting joe public know what's happening yeah it's why they have that thing called the black budget where billions isn't it like hundreds of billions of dollars just get put into and no one knows what they're doing with it they're making cool shit all the time which leads to like stealth aircraft and all of that cool technology that the military now has jesus that drilling is driving me insane I know you guys can't hear it somehow through the miracle of technology, but I'm trying to like read this and it's just constantly like, I'll just be reading and it'll be like, Bleh! and you're like, oh, that's not distracting at all. Right now, it's just, it just interrupts my thoughts all the time. Oh my God, it's, <sighs> I don't know what to do. I've got a headache the size of Nebraska. Let's go next door and have a shout at them. How long are you doing this for? You must be able to hear that, surely. We know the V-shaped craft couldn't possibly have been a plane or helicopter, but what about something like an airship? Oh, that makes sense, and it would be very quiet as well, wouldn't it? A really massive helium-filled airship shaped like an arrowhead or wedge that would glide nicely through the air with minimal sound, and who knows how big we could build one? Probably not a mile wide, that's just impractical, but something big enough to really impress onlookers below. As we don't know exactly how high the thing was flying, it's hard to be able to gauge the size of it accurately and there is no known photo or video of the flying craft why not though there were tens of thousands of people who said they saw this 1997 there were there were definitely video cameras like not everyone had them on their phone obviously but i've got holiday videos of me as a kid well before 1997. why would it be flying so low though maybe it was being tested and it was not responding to controls properly maybe it was actually the shadow of the airship that people saw although it was in the evening so shadows are unlikely but if it's not that, it still has to be something to do with the military. 
right? Like something hush-hush and top secret that they wouldn't want to give away, merely to assuage hundreds of eyewitness reports pointing out that they'd seen something. Well, not unexpectedly, the official explanation for the Phoenix Lights is somewhat prosaic and homegrown, uh, with not even a spy balloon in sight. Operation Snowbird It turns out that what people were seeing was not, in fact, one enormous alien spacecraft the size of more than 10 Boeing jumbo jets put wingtip to wingtip. It was, of course, a military training operation called Operation Snowbird, in which five planes, A-10 jets to be precise, Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt IIs, nicknamed Warthogs to be even more precise, were flying in formation towards davis Monthan Air Force Base in Tucson. Yeah. This is what I'm thinking. Formation flying. That's how it works. Later, the line of bright orbs witnessed over Phoenix at around 10 p.m. were actually military LUU-2 illumination flares dropped from planes at a great height of 15,000 feet or 4.5 kilometers. The flares were attached to small parachutes, meaning that it looked like they hung in the air for some time before they disappeared. It was just the flares were falling behind the mountain or going out. The operation was run by Maryland Air National Guard out of Tucson Air Force Base, accounting for the question of why nothing appeared to be on the books from the Luke Air Force Base for that night. There's as they were not flying through any restricted airspace, they weren't flagged as anything particularly unusual. An amateur astronomer looking through a telescope the night of March 13th spotted a formation of 15 planes over Scottsdale, Arizona, with each light being a pair of lights on the tip of each plane. So, there you go. Phoenix Lights Explained. <laughs> Boom! Done! Oh yeah, and that's a wrap. So, wait, why are we only halfway through this script? Very curious. But hold your horses, viewers, listeners, people shouting from the rooftops that this is just a cover-up. I called this the official explanation, and to be honest, I'm not convinced. Don't worry, we're not at the end of the story yet, and we're not the sort of people just to let a hazy government state uh, statement put us off digging a little bit deeper. So, well, here is the rub. The rub. On the face of it, planes and flares are a boring but sort of expected answer to this sort of thing. There are many odd points of the story, though, that makes it sound less convincing as it goes on. For one, the Phoenix Lights event happened in mid-March 97, yet it wasn't until July, four months later, that Captain Eileen Beans of the Arizona Air National Guard finally had enough of all the UFO nonsense and started investigating. No planes were doing anything out of the ordinary at Luke Air Base that night, but it turns out that a squadron from the Maryland Air National Guard, who were temporarily based out of Tucson, had been flying around as part of their Operation Snowbird training exercise. So, why did it take four months for someone to bring this to the public's attention? It seems awfully suspicious to suddenly come out with an explanation so long after the event that people just aren't forgetting about. And while it might explain things on the surface, it doesn't add up at all. Yeah, I'm totally into this just being a cover-up for whatever the military are really up to. It's not aliens. It's just like, okay, the military are like, yeah, we were doing this uh, flight formation thing. Will you guys leave us alone now? And we're not going to tell you about our special space helium balloon thing that we were testing out. It's just, it's just, they're covering up for military shit. Like spy planes and shit. Why we don't, maybe, I wish we knew what they were testing now. It's been like ages. 97? It's been ages! Come on! It's been like 30 years! Tell us! At the time, even at the time, Captain Eileen Beans confirmed that uh, where the Maryland Air Guard said they were flying didn't exactly match the course of the lights the people had been seeing. They started in Nevada. For Pete's sake, surely someone, somewhere, would have already known a training operation over multiple states' airspace was going on. I don't know whether these particular lights showed up on any radar, as apparently the airport didn't keep records for long and nobody inquired about it until it was too late to find out. Apparently, the flares had to be dropped as planes weren't allowed to land with them still on board, so one or all pilots were getting rid of them before returning to base. Lots of lights weren't seen, however, only about six, and they were all in a uniform row. Would all of the planes have just offloaded their spare flares at the exact same time over a densely populated area, or could one plane just drop them and they'd all spread out pretty equally. Even though I'm making this sound unlikely, I'm actually less convinced that the row of orbs seen over Phoenix were extraterrestrial now, as it seems like military flares might be a good shout. Yes, and I, th I think a plane could very easily drop things in sequence. The military's really good at doing things orderly. Like the planes, they fly in like, you see those jets flying through the air in a formation, and you're like, how's that work? That's amazing. They're all traveling the, if someone asked me to drive along the highway at the exact same speed as someone, I'd find it very challenging. You'd be like, oh, I'm a little bit faster, a little bit slower, a little bit faster. But these planes are just like perfect. And all of the flares could drop, and I'm sure it would be perfect. It's not that complicated. You know what's complicated? 
all of the other shit their plane's doing. So getting them to drop at the same time doesn't seem like a particularly big challenge, does it? I know, at first blush, it seems like a stupid suggestion, as people know what flares look like, and they also emit smoke and move around quite noticeably, and are unlikely to be able to hold a straight line for many minutes at a time, so your average flare they ain't. Yes, but there's also, I'm sure there's special flares, and th didn't they say they had parachutes and all of that stuff? The illumination flares that the Maryland Air Guard reportedly dropped, though, were parachute flares, exactly, and they're designed to illuminate a large area for several minutes for search and rescue teams. In people couldn't whip out a cell phone and immediately start recording good quality videos. The videos we do have are a bit jerky and grainy and are from varying distances, so it's quite hard to work out how far away, how high up, and therefore how large the lights are. It's also probable that from a distance any trailing smoke wouldn't be visible, especially at night against the contrast of the bright, bright flare. Exactly. Like when you see a fire at night, you don't see the smoke, you see the fire. I also saw a video shot by Dennis P. Freyamuth, who is apparently the chief investigator for the Arizona branch of MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network. In January 2013, using a fancy Canon XHA1S high-definition camera, he took a video of some illumination flares being dropped over the Barry Goldwater training range in Arizona, and guess what? They look not only exactly like the line of lights over Phoenix, but also like the orbs photographed by Dr. Keitel two years earlier. Oh my god, what a shocking revelation. Who could have predicted this? These only last about four and a half minutes, a far cry from the 20 minutes for the ones over Phoenix, but who's to say they were the exact same type? Yeah, I'm sure there are some that say like five minute burn time, and there are others that are bigger that say 20 minute burn time. Again, not rocket science, is it? From a distance, with the camera in manual mode, the view of the flares looked very much like the Phoenix lights. Freyamuth also says that he's over 50 miles away from the training range. When he turned to night vision mode, it was clear that the orbs were in fact flickery flares and you could even make out the smoke trail very easily. The flares were on parachutes, which couldn't be made out on the video, and held their formations well without appearing to move around much or drift apart. When new ones drop, they're on a slight delay, so it looks like they just blink out of nowhere. This doesn't really explain the fact that the Phoenix lights blinked out in different order to the order they appeared, but maybe some of the flares just burned a bit quicker. Yeah, again, this is it's always like just there's that balance, right? And it's like, well, which is the more likely answer? It's either aliens or it's flares burning at a slightly different rate to each other. I wonder which one's more likely, the flare thing or the aliens? Um... Come on, use your big brains, people. It's not hard. This type of flare can be dropped from a huge range of heights, and nobody on the ground would truly have any idea how up and how high up and therefore how big they are. If the flares were dropped miles away from the onlookers and at a high altitude, it might not be evident to the naked eye that they are, in fact, moving before they burn out or disappear behind a mountain. Dennis Freyamuth also noted that they get calls in to report UFOs every time the military drops flares at higher altitudes, as they can be seen from much farther away and therefore by more people. Dr. Lynn Kitai is staunch in her belief that the rows of orbs were not flares. Yeah, of course she is, because she's railroaded on her opinion. Like, I, I just don't... I believe that you believe this, Doc, but, like, I think you've also... You've got so locked into that belief that when you're presented evidence of another belief, you're like, nah, 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 I'm still right. Even though you can look at that modern footage, the canon footage, and be like, oh, okay, it does... You must at least be like, it looks... I mean... It's pretty similar, isn't it? Like, I feel like an objective observer would be like, mm, okay, look at these two things. And she's like, no, 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 mine were different. I'm the alien orb person. Me. On her website, thephoenixlights.net, the flare theory is listed in the myths section. She also asks pretty fairly, quote, if flares are routinely dropped over the Barry Goldwater range, and they have done so since 1941, wouldn't it be logical to assume that most people in Phoenix are used to seeing them? What would prompt thousands of people to suddenly call into local newspapers, police stations, news stations, radio stations, and Luke Air Force Base, all on the same night and all around the same time? It is plainly obvious that many people saw something very strange, not something as mundane or routine as a flare drop, and felt compelled to report it and find out what it was. Agreed. That's fine. So, this is something that is similar to flares, very similar, people, that is different, probably some secret military technology. People thought it was weird, so they phone in. It doesn't mean it's aliens. True that, Lynn true that. I would feel the same had I not seen Dennis Freyamuth's footage. I guess the Maryland Air Guard just dropped the flares from much higher than usual, maybe in an area that they weren't really supposed to, so more people ended up being able to see them. Yes, very reasonable 
explanation there, Katie. Uh, I agree. I agree. I agree with you. I even have local evidence that military flares can, in fact, burn for over 20 minutes. I live not, cu not far from Camp Pendleton in Orange County, and someone on our neighborhood Facebook group posted a picture of three vertical orbs in the night sky saying that they had hovered there for nearly 20 minutes. This is starting to sound familiar. Quote, Sometimes there are two, then a third appeared. What could this be? Someone else replied, Probably night illumination from Pendleton. They are usually fired out of an 81mm mortar. They burn long and bright, floating down on a parachute. It's fun if you're not the enemy. <laughs> We're about 30 miles away for reference. And then there's a picture from what I assume is Katie's house, looking over a lovely backyard, by the way. Um, to... Wow, those things are hella bright if that's 30 miles away. That's so crazy that they have these giant, like, to me a flare is like that thing you shoot up in the air on like a life raft or something. But that they have these things, they launch out of an 81mm mortar that parachute down and illuminate a whole area is crazy. That's so cool. Just as a spanner in the works, though, Jim Dilettoso, who founded Village Labs, an image processing company, ran all kinds of software comparisons with the video footage of the Phoenix Lights orbs compared with the flares. He had about 6,000 frames of the lights to work with and measured the brightness over the course of the film. It stays the same, whereas a flare's brightness oscillates up and down. He also processed photographs of the Phoenix Lights compared with flare lights to study the color content and the results were very different. Okay. I'm just going to be like different types of flares, ain't it? Having seen more flare evidence, however, I contend that maybe he was comparing the Phoenix lights with a different type of flare, not the illumination type that it probably was. He was also working with 1997 camera and film footage, not the high-def stuff that Framuth was able to shoot in 2013. Yeah, camera technology came a long way in 26 years, guys. The images Dilettoso was processing would not have been able to accurately capture or represent much about a ball of light that far away. Okay, so I think I've managed to convince myself that the rows of lights over Phoenix were, in fact, military flares. Boo hoo. But what about the wedge shaped or V shaped craft that was spotted earlier on in the evening? Was that just a bunch of flamed planes flying in formation after all? The V shaped craft. For me, the biggest piece of evidence against the A-10 jet explanation is all the eyewitness accounts. Yeah, I know people see what they want to see and exaggerate and even just flat out lie for various reasons, but the similar accounts given by numerous people who weren't connected in any way are very compelling. I never even heard of this event prior to many people making requests for this episode, and when I watched the 2005 documentary The Phoenix Lights as part of my research, I was shook. Even discounting the line of orbs later seen over Phoenix as flares, a group of planes flying in formation just does not in any way, shape, or form explain what these people experienced when the V of lights flew over them earlier that evening. If we take their word for it at least, here's why the explanation of five planes going over is totally ludicrous. And it was a lot of people, right? How many people? And, I mean, we, it has to only be the people who immediately called in, because people who are saying that they saw it later and calling in and being witnesses later, they've all heard the original witnesses, so they can all be discounted. The only people we can really listen to are the immediate people who called in when it was happening. Okay, number one. All the witnesses in the documentary were grown adults who would know what planes were. They lived near an international airport and an air force base, so were used to seeing planes at all times of day and night. They did not report seeing five planes. They reported seeing five extremely large lights. Number two. The lights were agreed to be orangey amber, large circles or ovals, as though they were attached to the underside of something. They were not spotlights or searchlights shining down on people. They were extremely large circles of self-contained light passing overhead. Number three. Some of the witnesses who were outside and underneath the lights as they passed over said that they were no more than 100 to 150 feet above them and they were almost completely silent. There's no way in hell that any type of plane could fly that close to you without you being able to hear it, unless it's just deafened you because of how close it is. Also, there would be some sort of downdraft or turbulence which nobody reported. What about a stealth plane? Isn't a B-2 stealth bomber kind of wedge-shaped? Yes, it is but it's also not a mile wide. It also can't cruise by super slowly, and the stealth part refers to being less detectable by radar. It still makes a noise that people can hear. Number four, the lights went by extremely slowly, way slower than a plane would be able to fly and maintain itself in the air. These lights were going across horizontally and level, not going up and down or moving about. Some witnesses then said the craft suddenly sped off, not something a blimp or airship would be able to do. It is all very suspicious, isn't it? All right. What do you, that's just a little weird. Yeah. 
it does again it doesn't make me think it's aliens it's make it it just makes me think the military has some cool f number five some people thought the lights were fixed in place to a structure and extrapolated that it would have been about a mile across at its winding widest point there isn't enough evidence to confirm the lights were part of a bigger craft but the formation the witness saw held its shape the whole time but it's doubtful that we're capable of building an aircraft that large at the moment yeah definitely it's a mile wide no f shot but formation it's nighttime it's things in formation right there's nothing really against that other than the stars thing which i think we already talked about number six according to the amateur astronomer he saw five planes in the sky and the lights people reported were just wing lights on the planes i'm sorry but these planes could have been there totally independently of this other light event if the planes were high up enough that two wing lights looked like one they would be so high as to not be particularly noticeable to anybody on the ground these people are saying that the lights were large and flew silently and smoothly over their heads not that they saw five tiny lights twinkling in the sky yet yeah, totally different things number seven if the eyewitnesses were off about the size of the thing and it really was some sort of secret military equipment or test why would they fly it so low and so close to homes and also down the 10 freeway over the middle of a crowded city well they probably didn't mean to because they probably didn't want this whole conspiracy theory did they People were actively paying attention to the night sky as the hell bop comet was still visible so if it was a secret test they couldn't have chosen a worse route or time there's also a lot of far less populated terrain just a few miles away from where the military trains all the time number eight a few people might be discredited as having fallen victim to an optical illusion or something but so many people in different areas reported seeing the same sort of craft so you can't help but think that there must be something to it yeah totally agree i don't think these people imagined it I think they definitely saw something weird. As well as that, here are some other things that don't add up and really start pushing my thoughts towards a cover up. It's just a, but it's like, it's not like they're trying to cover up like something. It's just a military test, isn't it? People who were active in the Air Force at the time recount seeing the craft lights and not being able to identify what they were. Planes should have other lights on, even on training exercises, and probably especially if they're doing training exercises in the dark over a major city. A 911 operator at the time of the incident reported that the lines were full of people calling in to report the lights, but nobody seemed scared, only interested. She said this was downplayed by the local press, who only reported that a few calls had come in. She also said that pilots, air traffic controllers, airport workers, police, officers and other people who may have knowledge of planes etc were all calling in to report the lights former councilwoman Frances Barwood said that after receiving thousands of calls from eyewitnesses in support of an investigation into the lights she and her team tried to talk to every person who had left a message over the council's summer break she estimates that over the course of a couple of months she personally spoke to 700 people with every single one saying the same thing apart from one person in the documentary she says and the one was the one they decided to publicize which was the kid who said it was airplanes other lights in other countries notwithstanding similar amber orbs have been seen in and near the area of the phoenix lights on multiple occasions before and since as another interesting tidbit the first pilot to radio in about the lights was approaching the airport in a small plane with his son they both saw six lights uniformly spaced in a v-shape the pilot radioed the tower to make sure that they were clear for landing and that the lights weren't other planes or something they should be worried about the tower confirmed that the lights were not planes as nothing was on the radar the pilot landed fine and took off again later that night he forgot all about it until two years later when his partner was watching something about the phoenix lights on tv and the original call-in from the pilot was mentioned all of a sudden the pilot remembered that it had been him who had called in and his son had completely forgotten about the incident and he hadn't even put it in his in his logbook temporary amnesia was reported from other witnesses too <laughs> not temporary amnesia he just doesn't remember a pretty insignificant detail from two years previously until he's reminded of it it's like it, ever that thing where it's like oh yeah you've been to this place before you know like my wife or something will be like sure I mean, we've been here before and i'll be like nah and then she'll be like oh yeah and there was this thing with that and i'll be like oh yeah we have been here before you know it's not like you have amnesia you just don't remember so why should we take any stock in this pilot's claims well he was hollywood actor kurt russell no he wasn't and while he hasn't said he saw an alien craft he said he has said that to him the lights were unidentified flying objects well kurt's absolutely bang on isn't he if it was an if it was an alien spacecraft he'd probably remember that shit, wouldn't he it'd be like oh yeah that time i saw aliens 
<laughs> rather than that time I saw some random like glowing lights that were probably just military something or other or just insignificant. So I remember Five Symington, the Arizona state governor who brushed away concerns with a press conference with someone dressed up in an alien costume. Yes, definitely. Years later, he totally backtracked and said him he himself had witnessed the craft and couldn't explain it. To avoid causing a panic and to try and cope with all the media interest that cropped up, he just had laughed it off. But now he admits that he saw something unexplainable. In the show called UFO Hunters, he says, quote, I describe what I saw as being otherworldly. According to KTAR News, Simonton said, I'm a pilot, and I know just about every machine that flies. It was bigger than anything I've ever seen. It remains a great mystery. Other people saw it. Responsible people. I don't know why people would ridicule it. Dude, you ridiculed yourself What you chatted about. Yeah, you did, dude. You ridiculed yourself. Also, you know every machine that flies, except for all the secret ones, mate. A lot of time has passed now, and if flares and aircrafts aren't the answer, we're still no closer to finding out any more about the strange lights over Nevada and Arizona that night in March 1997. In fact, oh, there we go, Arizona is near Nevada. Couldn't put that together. I feel like we mentioned Nevada before. Bingo. Correct. In fact, as anniversaries come and go, the same familiar faces keep popping up to keep the story in the public consciousness. That doesn't do much to help the cause, if you ask me, as having Dr. Lynn Kitai pumping out the same catchphrases in interview after interview just lessens their impact. She wrote and directed the 2005 Phoenix Lights documentary, by the way, and it was also based on a book she wrote, oddly enough, called The Phoenix Lights, A Skeptic's Discovery That We Are Not Alone. She says, at one point talking about how the craft may have come from another dimension, we may just be looking on the AM dial for an FM frequency. All right. <laughs> Look, Doc, you and I have a very, very different definition of skeptic, okay? This seems quite profound, but when you hear her just saying it by rote in later interviews, it just starts to sound a bit kooky, and the effect just isn't the same. Also, it's a little annoying that all of these people have decided to ascribe meaning to their encounters and go on about opening up their hearts to communication with other beings like they're some kind of expert. Another possible take is that the extraterrestrial craft was real, and the military scrambled to tack their own events onto it that would try to explain the whole night. The account of the V-shaped craft was different enough to the row of lights over Phoenix, however, that the two events are now considered separate things. Because of the time passed between the event and and the military tossing out Operation Snowbird as an explanation, it just served to convince people that what they really saw was from another dimension or another world. I don't understand why people are so quick to jump to this when there's no real evidence for it whatsoever. It's like, yeah, it could be some secret military shit or it could be aliens. Why would you jump to aliens? Because something we know, I, like I've said, I believe aliens are real, but something we know for a fact is real and here on Earth, secret military why don't we jump to that explanation rather than the aliens explanation i don't understand how people's brains work who jump to aliens what would be the downside of a visit from stellar visitors though if this is being covered up what is the new world order actually afraid of maybe it's just afraid of hard work the place is kind of a mess right it's a bit embarrassing when you know someone's coming around to see you you can miraculously do about a month's worth of cleaning and tidying in about half an hour so imagine what we could do to spruce up the planet if beings from an a different galaxy or dimension did decide to pop in pop in again quick everyone stop fighting clean up those oceans plant a few million trees very quickly we don't want the aliens to think we're gross idiots yeah the, <laughs> the aliens coming it's like wait wait you guys aren't you all one race aren't you all uh, not race like um uh, is it race what's it called like humans species <laughs> big brain aren't you all one species why are you fighting each other what's going on why are you killing each other you're one species that would be like us aliens killing each other we're aliens why would we kill each other it's crazy isn't it it's crazy why are you crazy <laughs> In the Phoenix Lights episode of UFO Hunters, I was quite surprised that conspiracy-minded ufologist, which apparently is the correct way to pronounce that word that I learned, you'd think UFO, UFologist, or maybe it is ufologist. Well, it is ufologist, but it's dumb. Bill Barnes decided at the end that what flew over these people's heads was a rigid hull airship. Oh, Bill, you've really let the side down here. What about the size and swift acceleration? Why was it flying so low, Bill? Why? It might be worth saying, though, that while a lot of people have steadfastly clung to the idea that the lights were extraterrestrial in origin, some remain more level-headed in that while they can't rule aliens out, they can't exactly rule them in. 
I like all these level-headed people. They remind me of me. Jim Dilatoso, who ran the image testing on the video footage, perhaps sums up his uh, my feelings the best when he was quoted in the Arizona Republic as saying, quote, I don't know what it was. I only know what it was not. He's talking about planes and flares if he didn't get it. So, yes, the debate rumbles on with neither side likely to change their mind until a definite first contact is made or the experience is somehow recreated to everyone's satisfaction. Yeah, which the military aren't going to do, are they? Because it's secret. Even though it's 30 years ago. Come on, military, tell us what you were really up to. I want a cool explanation. Personally, I think I do agree about the flares part. Sorry, Dr. Lin, as they can last a lot longer than people realize. But the reports from earlier in the evening about the large V or wedge formation of huge light slowly overhead is much more difficult to explain away, although there's no actual footage of it, which is obviously an issue. Yeah, why did no one point? How many people called in? I really want to know, because if it was like 10 people, I'd be like, shut up. If it's like 1,000, I'd be like, oh, this is a lot. But why did no one point a video camera at it? In more recent times, there have been confirmed hoaxes, such as in April 2008, where mysterious lights once again appeared over Phoenix. This turned out to be someone intentionally pranking the public by tying road flares to helium balloons and letting them go at one-minute intervals from his back garden. A movie called Phoenix Forgotten came out in 2017, which used the old found footage trope to tie the Phoenix Lights event to the fictional disappearance of some teenagers. Ridley Scott is listed as one of the producers, but it's only a 5.3 on IMDb, so I won't bother with that one. Yeah, 5.3 on IMDb is bad. Because IMDb doesn't everything seem to be between 6 and 8, unless it's shockingly poor or shockingly good. In conclusion then, while I might have made myself part of a cover-up I don't really understand, I'm more or less convinced that any orbs, rows of lights in the sky, etc. can be explained satisfactorily as illumination flares. That flying wedge, though, that's a different story. And that's where we end today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. Need to take a little mental break from all the drilling next door, and um, maybe I'll have some lunch. Fascinating story. Thanks for sharing, Simon, and I'll see you next time.